October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which means that it's time to think pink. And that's the inspiration for this week's special menu. Real, true and genuine are some of the words that come to mind when you try to define what's meant by something being authentic. And they're all equally descriptive of the authentic movement founded by Zara Saeed and Shaham Williams. Zara and Shaham are passionate about health and wellness, with Zara focusing on fitness while Shaham pours her knowledge and energy into healthy food and catering. Delicious food. They are dedicated to empowering women with an emphasis on personal growth and development, building mental and physical strength and stamina on the one hand while providing the body with nutritious and tasty food on the other. Shaham offered to share some authentic cooking ideas with Korea. As a busy woman, it's not always easy to lead a healthy lifestyle. We tend to take the quick way out, be it fast food or that guilty pleasure snack. Shaham Williams and her love for food has created a healthy living movement. And today we get to spend a little bit of time with her and get to know a few pink inspired recipes. Hi Pia, how are you? Good on yourself. I'm great, thanks. Would you like to come on in to get some cooking done? Let's do this. So where did your love for cooking begin? I think it all actually started at home with my mom and my gran. We always had home cooked meals every night. They hated going out for supper. So it was always fresh and authentic and really wholesome meals. Honestly though, I only really started cooking once I got married. Before I got married, I, I didn't know how to boil rice. I used to phone my mom and be like, Mom, how do I boil a pot of rice? And I think that's where it started and I haven't stopped since then. So what are we making today? For starters, we're doing a beetroot and micro herb salad. And then for mains, we're doing a salmon and asparagus with a berry salad side. And for dessert, we're doing a rose and pistachio panna cotta. I've always wanted to learn to make panna cotta. And it's really easy. I can't wait to show you. Shall we get started? Let's start with our beetroot salad. So firstly, we have a creme fraiche and beetroot smear that we're going to use for the salad. All I used was some creme fraiche and some beetroot juice and I whipped it together. So I'm just going to stir up the creme fraiche and once it's all nicely stirred up, I'm going to smear it onto my plate. So it's not really about being perfect here? No, it never is. <laughs> and then next I'm going to add some of my micro lettuce to the salad make it nice and green and crunchy. And then we move on to our beetroot. And we're just going to place that down onto the plate. And then I'm going to use some feta. The feta always makes it nice and salty, gives it some extra flavor. So we'll place that down nicely. And then for some crunch, I'm going to add my walnut. which has also got a nice flavor to it. And I will top it off with some balsamic vinegar, which has been reduced. And this just makes it look beautiful, like it's come out of a five-star restaurant. Lastly, I'll always use flowers on my food because I like things to look pretty. And there you go. It's a beautiful summer salad. So shall we get on to the second course? Lit. So for our second course, we're making Norwegian salmon. It's full of your omegas and it's quite good in protein as well. It's been deboned and I've prepared the salmon with some salt and pepper and some olive oil and I've got a nice dressing prepared. So now I'm going to heat my pan up so it's nice and hot for the salmon. How hot does the pan need to be? Quite nice and hot so that it just sears two minutes on each side. So I'm going to place my salmon that's been prepared into the pan. If you don't like your salmon too rare, you can obviously cook it for longer than two minutes on each side. And you can also see the pink in the middle of the salmon. We'll let you know how well done the salmon is. So now when we flip over to the other side, you need to be nice and careful when lifting so that you don't break the fish. So the salmon looks like it's ready now. We can remove it from the pan. It's quite nice and pink in the middle and it's crispy on the outside. And when plating, place it down with your skin side down and just be gentle so that it doesn't break. And there you go, your perfectly seared salmon. It looks amazing and smells so fragrant and fresh. So what are we adding to it? This is a beetroot dressing that I've prepared and all it is is some beetroot juice with some maple syrup and a little bit of balsamic that I've reduced on the stove. You get it to simmer until it becomes like a syrupy consistency. So we're going to use our blanched asparagus and place it nicely onto our plate. And now we're going to use our micro herbs to make our berry salad 
and place that nicely on the plate too. We want some raspberries. And lastly, some pomegranate. It looks absolutely amazing. With this, I'm going to cut some lemon for my asparagus, just to give it some nice flavor. And squeeze that all over my asparagus and drizzle a little bit of olive oil onto it. Not too much. And lastly, we're going to top off our salmon with our beetroot dressing. And there you go. Look at that color. It looks divine. Lastly, let's add some flowers to make it look pretty. So with South Africans, we live a crazy lifestyle. Why is it so important to kind of bring that healthy element back in again? We need to start learning how to take some time out and, and fuel our bodies with the right kind of food and nutrition and just be more mindful. So when I think dessert, I automatically think something unhealthy. But we're going to make something quite nice today. Yes, I think there's many options for healthy desserts out there, but also we like to play by the 80-20 rule. you got to enjoy your food as well. You don't want to be eating greens all the time. Okay, great, because the last time I made panna cotta, I could literally throw it at someone. It was so rock hard. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> We're going to pour our milk into our saucepan. Remember, we don't want our milk to boil. So the saucepan needs to be at a very low temperature. Otherwise, the gelatine clumps up and it's not very nice. And once your milk is warming up, the gelatine will form a skin-like layer. And once it's wrinkly, you can then pick up your spoon and stir the gelatine into the milk. Make sure you keep on checking the temperature of your milk because you don't want your milk to simmer or boil. Once the gelatine has disappeared, you can then switch off your stove. You will then take your cream and pour that in to the milk. It doesn't have to be a double thick cream. I do know that a lot of panna cottas do use double thick cream, but this one is just a plain cream. We're now going to add our rose essence. Just make sure that you don't use too much because it can overpower the dessert quite a lot. Once that's in, we're going to add just a little bit of caster sugar just to sweeten it up a bit. It is a dessert after all. And we'll stir that in until that dissolves. And then I'll lastly add in some maple syrup just for some extra sweetening. And now I'll give this a stir until everything's dissolved and mixed in quite nicely. It is off of the heat, so I don't have to worry about it overboiling or overcooking. Now we're going to pour it into our molds. And there we go. All right, so how do we plate this? We're going to take our pistachio nuts, which I used butter and some maple syrup just to give it a nice crusty flavor so that it sticks to the bottom of your mold. Just a thin little layer. Just a thin layer, not too thick. It's just to give it some nice crunch and flavor. We're going to place our panna cotta into the mold, just like that. So you're going to put this into the fridge for three to four hours just to chill and get quite nice and hard. And I've already prepared one, so we're going to use that one to top with our toppings. Once your panna cotta is chilled and your molds are ready to be plated, you're going to use a berry Kool-Aid to top with. The berry Kool-Aid was just some berries in a little bit of water and you allow that to simmer and get to a nice sugary consistency. I did add a little bit of maple syrup again, just for the stickiness. We're going to top our panna cotta with two berries and we're going to add some pistachios on the top for some flavor and color again. Lastly, and always, I'm going to add a pretty little flower just to give it a nice look. And that's our dessert. Well, it looks absolutely amazing, but I feel like we should start trying some of your dishes. I think we should too. <laughs> Wow, this looks absolutely amazing and it's so nice to see that you can make healthy food exciting. See, not everything has to be drab when it's healthy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending some time with me and giving me a little bit of uh, quick tips to make things a little pinker and of course a little healthier. It's only a pleasure. It is lovely having you in the kitchen today. Well, considering that it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we're getting towards the end of the year, why not give yourself the best gift you possibly can? Go get tested. At the end of the day, they always say prevention's better than the cure, right? Yes, they do. <laughs> so go get tested and uh, just make sure that you are healthy. It's the best gift you can give yourself. But I think we're gonna get tucked into this. 
rich in protein and low in carbs. This is Pink Power on a plate and oh so tasty.